welcome to my talk, Infrastructure as Secure Code, uh, which is about my project, uh, PuppetLint Security Plugins. First, uh, I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Florian Freund. I'm working in operations since over 20 years now. Um, in 2007, I started using Infrastructure as Code with a CF Engine. And in 2011, I switched to Puppet. Um, at the moment, I'm uh, working at uh, the Fraunhofer Institute for Integrated Circuits uh, in Erlangen, Germany, uh, which may be known to you as the creator of MP3 down in the 19s. And I started my PhD project this year at the Fern University in Hagen. Um, if you like, contact me on GitHub or Twitter or LinkedIn. And yeah, now let's get started with my project. First, I ask myself um, how to detect security threats in Puppet. Um, security threats are rising and cause huge damage to the, to the industry. And uh, one cause for uh, security threats is insecure system configuration. And uh, today with uh, automation tools like Puppet, uh, it is very easy to spread an insecure system configuration um, easily over a huge amount of systems like cloud instances or something like that. And so the detection of security threats in Puppet code at a very early stage would uh, reduce uh, risks significantly. So uh, one uh, tool we can use is static code analysis. And in the Puppet world, there is a tool called uh, Puppet Lint which uh, can perform static code analysis on Puppet code to detect style guide issues. Um, it's a command line tool. It uh, can therefore be used uh, very easily in an early stage of the development by integrating it into the IDE or in an automated continuous integration pipeline. And it can be extended uh, using plugins. It's open source and uh, available on GitHub. So my idea was to identify security threats uh, using Puppet Lint, and I created the Puppet Lint Security Plugins project in 2015 um, as a part of my bachelor thesis. Um, yeah, it's a plugin for Puppet Lint, as already said, and the last update was in 2017, where I added support for Puppet Lint 2. Um, it's able to uh, detect around about 23 security threats out of the box. Um, you can download it from uh, GitHub or as a Ruby gem um, for it's ready for installation. Um, dur during the creation of the tool, I made some assumptions and uh, created some stereotypes and use cases. Uh, first, uh, I, I assume that uh, I want to detect threats uh, within a production or puppet environment um, and uh, during the communication of the components in such an environment. Um, there are three stereotypes, a uh, puppet developer, um, an admin and an attacker. All these um, users um, have separated privileges. So the puppet developer um, creates his Puppet modules in a staging environment and deploys them um, on the Puppet Master. Um, the administrator uh, has direct access to the, to the boxes and fixes incidents, monitors the system, patches the system, and uh, may also manage uh, parameters um, in an external system like Hira. And last but not least, an attacker, which may attack the system. Um, yeah, as I said, uh, there may be um, external data sources for the puppet parameters like Hira. So I assumed that uh, those parameters um, may be uh, dangerous potentially and should uh, be checked. I also assume that an attacker knows a puppet is used for configuration management, so um, he may attack the puppet system itself. Yeah, next step was um, 
which threads uh, could be detected in, in Puppet code. Um, I performed a thread analysis using the Stride thread model by Adam Showstack from Microsoft. Um, and I uh, put other sources into account, like the common weakness enumeration database or several books, for example, the 24 deadly sins of software security. And with this sources, I um, created several checks um, for the Puppet code, um, where I will give you a brief overview now. Um, I've clustered the checks a little bit, so uh, just a, a short overview. Um, there are checks available for code injection, like I told you before, uh, HIRA parameters may be uh, insecure, so um, there are checks which um, test if um, parameters of a Puppet class are directly used in executions uh, to avoid that um, commands should, could be executed uh, with the rights of the Puppet agent with a, a higher parameter. Um, there are checks um, which um, test if the tidying of files is too greedy. For example, if you're tidying everything or if you're using an, a regular expression which, which is too greedy. Um, file permissions are an issue, like uh, set group ID, set user ID, or world permissions. Firewall rules will be checked uh, if there are uh, any, any rules or if uh, domain names are used in firewall rules, which could be spoofed. Package handling issues can be detected, like um, installing an uh, apt repository without a GPG key or pinning package versions, so future updates cannot be installed. Um, I'm detecting uh, the usage of passwords in, in the code. Um, service handling uh, is a bigger part. Um, I'm detecting several services which may accidentally be disabled or um, something like uh, Apache configurations. And uh, last but not least, user permissions. So when you're configuring a sudo without the usage of a password or create a second root user with ID zero or an SSH login, which allows direct root access. So this is just an, an overview. And now I will go a little bit more into, uh, into the depth. Um, and give you an example first. Um, as you can see, uh, I have a uh, Puppet class called Demo uh, with a subclass called Apache with bad cipher. And it basically uses uh, the Puppet Labs um, Apache module and um, creates a uh, virtual host. Um, and configures the Apache uh, mod SSL, uh, where it defines a cipher suite, which is you know, pretty default in older Debian versions and um, is unsecure. Then I have a Linux box here. Um, I'll install the Puppet Lint security plugins via Gem, which also installs uh, Puppet Lint as a dependency. Um, we have the directory tree with the demo Puppet module and the Puppet class Apache with bad cipher here, where uh, at line uh, 20, um, we have the definition of the unsecure cipher suits. And uh, now I will run uh, Puppet Lint on this demo module with the parameter um, with context to see uh, where an error occurs. And as we can see, it uh, gives us a warning that uh, unsecure ciphers are used on line 20, which is uh, what was expected. Um, if you like to uh, extend this tool, uh, you can create your, your own security checks or your own security plugins. Um, all you have to do is to clone uh, the Git repository and create a new file in the plugins directory. Um, give uh, the new check an uh, identifier, and then you can call several methods. Uh, for instance, the method check resource index, which takes um, an, 
Puppet Lint resource uh, identifier, like before the Apache mod SSL uh, identifier. You can um, pass a severity, a warning of critical, and a message string description of the problem. And then uh, you basically have a code block where you do your checks and return true or false, whether the check is uh, okay or not. Um, now let's see how this works in a real world scenario um, with the security Apache bad cipher test uh, we saw before. Um, first of all, um, I defined a, a whitelist with cipher suits, uh, which are um, secure for me. Um, here I, I took the, the cipherlist.eu EU website uh, as a reference. Um, then uh, I, I tell the um, check resource index um, method that I want to perform tests on Apache mod SSL resources. Um, I retrieve the cipher list from the Puppet code, um, which depends here on the Puppet Labs Apache module. And finally, um, I use OpenSSL to compare those cipher lists and uh, fail if uh, any, list, uh, any cipher is found, which is not um, in the whitelist. So that's um, how it works. Um, now let's talk a little bit uh, about the future. Um, yeah, contributions are very welcome. Uh, as I told you before, there is no active development since 2017. But uh, nevertheless, uh, the project uh, gained uh, interest from Ben Ford from Puppet uh, recently, which is the cause uh, why I'm talking to you now and having this talk. Um, it's planned to bring this project a little bit more uh, back to life and transfer it to, to Puppet Labs or to Vox Popali. So please feel free to, to contribute, clone the repository, uh, create new security checks or write issues or something like that. And um, yeah, I uh, look forward to you. So thank you uh, for your listening. And uh, this was my talk. And now I'm open for questions at the, uh, at the Slack channel. And yeah, thank you for your audience.